Welcome to another edition of Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine and Chroma, and you're watching Diaspora Network Television. Today, we are joined by a good friend of mine, a fellow Pan-Africanist. He is the founder of Ubuntu Leadership Institute. And if you don't know about Ubuntu, Ubuntu Leadership Institute, they were in charge of the, the very first ever chairmanship candidacy debate for the African Union Commission chair. That was back in 2016. And it was his idea, and he was able to convince the African Union to introduce it for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to help me welcome my friend, Johannes Mezgebe. How are you doing? I am doing very good. Thanks for asking me, and uh, I'm very much happy to be on your program. Very good, thank you. Originally, you're from Ethiopia. Well, I would like right? to introduce myself. I'm an African citizen born in Ethiopia. Okay, I like that much. Even better, you are familiar with the inner workings of the African Union, correct? Well, I'm trying my best because I don't have any other option. I am the African Union, so right. I have to know that. Okay, how long have you been in? How long have you been associated with the African Union? Well, my first interaction with the African Union Commission was in 2004, when I was a youth leader following the uh, participation of the first Pan-African Youth Leadership Summit that took place in Accra, Ghana, hosted by the then President Abdullahi Wad. So uh, President Abdullahi Wad hosted... Uh, That's uh, Senegal, right? Was that in Senegal, Dakar in 2004. And the, Dakar, outcome okay. of that summit, yes, and the, the outcome of that summit was presented to the uh, heads of states and governments uh, in their summit in Addis Ababa in July 2004. So since then, I began to be part, uh, involved within the uh, African Union system. And in 2006, I represented the youth and traveled to Brazil participate in the African and the Diaspora Summit. So as soon as then, I have been involved with uh, the African Union. Okay. You described yourself, I asked you if you're Ethiopian and you say you are African. Why is it so important for you to be an African rather than an Ethiopian? Well, whatever the agenda of Ethiopia, for Ethiopia to achieve our vision and for our agenda, I believe that we have to work uh, with our brothers and sisters from across the continent as a unified voice. So for me, the more African I am, the better Ethiopia I become. Very good. And so tell us what's happening at the African Union. Uh, a lot of people, we hear it and it's out there, but what is really going on there? Well, first of all, I think that's a very good question. And let me just tell you what was expected the organization. So let me give mm -hmm. you that background. So at the dawn mm -hmm. of the new millennium in July 1999, mm -hmm. in Libya, when African leaders decided to transform the organization of African unity into the African Union, which was launched in the Durban summit in 2002, the expectation of the organization was to accelerate the socio-economic development and political integration of our continent, not at the level of countries or governments, but by forging greater bonds among citizens of Africa. And the African Union Commission was now tasked to serve as the crucial uh, administrative hub to drive this vision. And the African Union Commission is the key 
organ responsible for the day-to-day -day activity of the affairs of the union. It is supposed to represent the African Union. It is supposed to represent the yearnings and aspirations of the 55 member states. It is supposed to defend the continental collective interest. And the African Union Commission is also expected to articulate the common African position, the African Agenda 2063, it is strategic vision and plan. Every time we, we engage with our partners, whether they are in China or Europe or America, so we have to be able to articulate our agenda, defend our agenda and make sure our voices is heard. Now, what have we done? For the first time, when Madame Zuma was chairperson of the African Union Commission, now we were able to define Africa's agenda for the Africa. Remember, when the Europeans had an agenda for Africa, the Chinese have an agenda for Africa, the Americans have an agenda for Africa. Africa never had an agenda for Africa until we had Madame Zuma as the chairperson of the African Union Commission and when she came up with the Agenda 2063. Okay. So that was very important for Madame Zuma's legacy. And that Agenda 63, even though it is like a 50 years plan, but it came up with a certain flagship projects, mm -hmm. which were supposed to be implemented during Faki Musa's time. So Madame okay. Zuma came up with the agenda. She laid out like, you know, the most important projects for the continent, including the continental free trade area, but there are also so many okay. others. So okay. now, what is African Union doing now vis-a-vis -vis this expectation? To be honest, I can't, I don't hear anything. I Good. Don't hear anything so let me, so let me, let me ask you about that. Madam Zuma, Madam Zuma came up with the idea, but I also know that Madam Zuma served only one term. Why didn't she stay for a second term to get the idea off the ground? Well, uh, I think this is a question for Madame Zuma. And uh, okay. unfortunately, I'm not able to answer that, but I would have okay. loved to see her you know, doing the second term. Do you get the, since you know the inner workings of it, do you get the impression that she wanted to stay, but they did not allow her to stay or she left voluntarily? Well, my guess is that uh, her own people and her own uh, uh, party back home uh, probably mm -hmm. uh, needed her more to serve the in South Africa. Oh. And uh, maybe she, I think, okay. wanted to, to serve in South Africa. But I am sure if she had wanted to do the second term, everybody would have loved to keep her. Okay. Now, based on what you described, right, when you go into any country, I can talk about Ghana, you hear Ghanaians, when you talk about politics, they are only talking about Ghanaian politics. And I'm sure it's probably the same in Ethiopia, uh, although Ethiopia might be different because the AU and the continental body is headquartered there. But in most countries, they talk about intra-country politics. Is the African citizen, the man on the street, is he paying enough attention at the continental body and how it can help us to realize our aspirations? Well, first of all, I think, let's talk about 1957 in Ghana. When your then president Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. when he talked about, he cannot talk about Ghana without talking about Africa. I think I would yeah. argue that probably in Ghana, we talk a lot about Africa than many other African countries when it comes to describing themselves, including Ethiopia. I'm sure uh, I would feel more African in uh, Ghana than in Ethiopia, though the headquarters of the commission is in Addis Ababa. So I'm being very honest with you on that. But okay. generally, generally speaking, yes, uh, I'll give you an example. Take the United Nations system. Go mm -hmm. to any rural area in Africa and ask these uh, kids in the streets, 
if you mm -hmm. ask them if they know UNICEF or if you they know UNFPA or uh, UNDP, the United Nations organizations, any yes, of the agencies of the Union, the uh, sorry, mm -hmm. the United Nations system, they will tell you because it yeah. means something to them. And if yes. you were to go to any part of our continent and ask if any of these young people would know the political department of the African Union or the economic uh, commission or that is sad. social affairs, nobody knows about it. Nobody knows about <laughs> that it. Is, Unfortunately, Johannes, that is very sad. That is very sad. Why is that? And let me tell you what. One of the main reasons why Africa had to transform itself from the organization of the African unity into the African Union was because the African Union is supposed to be people driven, people centered organization. Remember when it was organization of the African unity, its agenda was mainly with the liberation and the independence. But after apartheid, South Africa, then we wanted to actually transform the socio-economic development and the political integration. And the AU was tasked to do that. And unfortunately, 50 years later. Okay. Is any progress? Okay, is so progress? now let's say that it trans it, it evolved from OAU to AU organization of african unity to african union to make it more people driven it's been two decades what have you what what specific of um accomplishment can you or anybody uh, can you say because you're an observer what specific accomplishments can you credit to the au that it has done um uh, in the two decades that has been in existence I'm sorry, but you know I cannot mention um, uh, achievements that I can be proud of. Of course, there are here and there, but I think the the highlight for me is the agenda that was defined by the Agenda 2063, and that was okay. Madam Zuma style because that was a very important project, and for me, that is. Uh, the most important uh, outcome of the commission. Okay. Well, they set up the African Continental Free Trade Area, that's supposed to be big, which was launched last month here in Accra. So let me tell you, even that project was launched during Madame Zuma's time. So let me give you a couple of, or two or three examples of the uh, uh, flagship projects okay one is for example the integrated high speed train that was supposed to be implemented okay we can talk about the african passport and the free movement of african people we don't okay. hear about this no i'm hearing about, about it for the first time Sudan. sorry i said i'm hearing about the african passport for the first time but that is one of the aspiration of the agenda 263 and the side of things again the cyber security the african outer space the uh, pan-african universities so these were meant to actually describe what the african union is but unfortunately now it's been four years since Musafaki has been the chair of the AU. And the only mm -hmm. thing that I hear is the continental free trade area, which was even okay. launched during Madame Zuma's time. But we were supposed to work on those flagship projects, and we're not hearing them. Okay, so then let's talk about why is he still there? Uh, when is the next election? Well, the next election is supposed to take place in February 2021 during the uh, okay. summit. Okay. How do how do they go about electing the leader of um, the African Union Commission chair? Well, as we know, 
it has always been elected behind the closed doors. And this was challenged. You remember the reform summit, which was headed by President Paul Kagame. Mm -hmm. So they, just, they, had, they were concerned and President Kagame took the responsibility to actually uh, reform the African Union. And he came up with a report. Okay. And that report, amongst many other recommendations, one was to actually address this issue of leadership of the organization. And uh, wait, time out. When was this reform? 2016? When, when was it? Yes. Yes, it was proposed in 2016, but I think the summit took place in 2017. Okay, so let me get this straight. An organization that was formed in 1999, at the, well, in 2003, right? That's when the AU came into actualization. And just 14 years later, we're talking about reform. Why couldn't they get it right the first time? Well, I think that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this. Even if, let's say, for whatever reason, that too, it took them so many years to, 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 to come to that decision. But even, mm -hmm. it's been like, how many years now? More than three years since they've decided to transform, to reform the organization. But we don't see progress. And for me, if I were to put all the problems of the African Union in one word, it is leadership. We have a leadership problem. And like I said, when we, Madame Zuma came up with her agenda, the next leader that what we needed was to implement this agenda 26.3 and to deliver the outcomes. In your but, opinion, yeah, four yeah. years, in, in, in your opinion, four years, if you were to grade Musa Faki, the African Union Committee Chair, you are the professor, grade zero to 100, what percentage would you give him? I would say that I wouldn't vote him to run for the second election. I wouldn't. You wouldn't. But it looks like all the leaders, but uh, all the presidents want him to run for the second term. And that is part of the problem of this continent. I'll tell you what. You see, when we talk of electing the leadership of the African Union Commission, so the problem mm -hmm. with African leaders is they start with a person. Now they start with Faki. Yeah. Now they try now to define the criteria, what to do, or they leave it for Faki to determine the priorities. So what okay. I wanted to see is, first, we need to have a clarity on what are the challenges of our continent for the next four years? What are the objectives? What are the priorities for our continent for the next four years? So we need to have those clarity first before we talk about the person. So once we have a clarity on our uh, priorities, then we can talk about, mm -hmm. okay, who should we elect to deliver these goals? Now, the problem with the African leaders is that now, when they want to elect the chairperson, they look into, okay, who is the foreign minister? And then they go by block. They go, whether that person is Francophone in Africa, Anglophone Africa, Lusophone Africa, and there is no Anglophone Africa. They tell us, okay, this is Sub Saharan Africa, North Africa, Francophone Africa, Anglophone Africa. But there is one Africa. So African leaders need to elect the leadership based on competence. They need to look into the competency. It doesn't matter which region he or she comes. It doesn't matter what tribe or what party, what uh, country he it's, or she belongs well, to. It, Johannes, it sounds to me like you're describing a country club. Is the African Union a country club? Well, it is not the organization that is meant to be. It is not the organization that is supposed to serve, I mean, they're supposed to serve the community, the citizens of Africa, but they're not even connected to the citizen. 
they are not allowing African citizens to participate in the affairs of the union. So it's like a political class. It is, it is yeah. like what you've described, a club for the political class. Now, the headquarter based in Addis Ababa, it looks like a fortress. You don't see this leadership. How many Ethiopians, Faki Musa, know? I don't think if he can mention 10 people. I don't know. Outside of that compound. So what are they doing in Addis Ababa to connect themselves to the, to the people on the ground? Yes. Okay. Maybe. What are they doing, maybe. What are they doing to allow the Addis Arabians, if not uh -huh. the Ethiopians, but the Addis Arabians okay. to participate in the affairs of the union? How many high schools in Addis Ababa have AU clubs? How many of the Addis Ababa universities, in a university in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, knows about the organization? And what are they doing? Like we have commissioners, experts, directors, but what are they okay. doing? All right, let me ask you, maybe instead of having just a president's elect the african union commission chair maybe the citizens should elect them directly what do you say about that well with that in mind you talked about the debate that we organized four years ago so the okay. idea of that debate was you see it has always been heads of states electing the leaders of the commission behind closed doors mm -hmm. so the idea of that debate was before they are actually elected, we want to present them to the citizens and to ask them what vision they have for the continent and to allow African citizens to ask them questions. And we had a serious challenge to do that debate. And it wasn't okay. easy. But the good okay. news is we did it. We did it. Okay. How did it go? How was it? It was it was excellent. In fact, the first time for the history of the first time for the history of the history of the African Union, we had millions of people watched it live across the whole continent. We had millions okay. of people tweeted as it happened, and so that was part of like the the, the facilitating the interaction of African citizens. So, are you going to organize it again? Are you going to organize are, it again? For we this are year? working to organize it. So, I will tell you what. So it's been yeah. years since, you know, we've been preparing ourselves to organize a debate for the incoming candidates. So, uh -huh. but what we are hearing is, unfortunately, it seems like African leaders through their regional blocks have reached a sort of consciousness to go ahead with Faki to be the what? second, I mean, well, what we are hearing informally, what I'm hearing at least informally, that member states mm -hmm. have kind of agreed to allow Faki Musa to run for the second time. Because I don't see okay. any candidates for the chairperson. Because I have a list of ah. candidates for the chair po for the post of the chairperson of the African Union Commission. So what I see is there is one lady, our sister, based in Washington, D.C., African Union, the former African Union ambassador mm -hmm. to the U.S., Ambassador Arikana. Mm -hmm. She has submitted mm -hmm. her application to the AU. We also know about Faki mm -hmm. Musa's application to run for the second term. But it seems like, mm -hmm. it seems like okay. the regional blocks, like, for example, for Ambassador Arikana to be a candidate, she has to be endorsed by the Sadiq region. For like the same as Faki Musa was okay. endorsed by his Central Africa region. So, but I don't see okay. Ambassador Arikana's name in the list that was submitted by the Sadiq, which would allow how many how many Musa alone. Okay, so question. The first time you organized the debate, how many candidates 
were we had running for candidates. African Union Commission. Five candidates. Five candidates. Okay. Sorry, so one second. So you in have five. In 2016, uh -huh. you had five candidates. We were supposed we were supposed to elect the chairperson because Madam Zuma was outgoing, and we had three candidates. Okay. And we made a lot okay. of noise because the three candidates that we had were not quite, we didn't believe in their competence because Africa has okay. a better qualified candidates, but they were not there. And then okay. they could not get the two third vote and it was postponed okay. for another six months. Then okay. we had five candidates, like the foreign minister of the former foreign minister of Kenya, Amina Mohammed. And then we had uh, the Botswana foreign minister, and then we had the Equatorial Guinea foreign minister, and then we had uh, Faki Musa himself and Abdele Batili from Senegal. So we had these five candidates participated in the debate. So Good. our hope was, our hope mm -hmm. was for this time to have more candidates, to have better qualified candidates, mm -hmm. and in fact for the public to participate in the election of these candidates. You see, the last candidate, that last debate that we organized, the role of the public was not really meaningful because at the end of the day, still- It was the first time. Yes, it was the first time. But this okay. time around, we were hoping, you see, to talk to the telecom system in the continent to integrate themselves and to give us like, let's say, four digit number for people to text right and for us to organize like you know a voting ballot and then you know a, a poll so that for mm -hmm. the public to directly vote according mm -hmm. to the public who they would want to have as a chair of the commission based on the vision that is presented by the uh, by the by the, uh, the candidates, candidates. Mm -hmm. it seems mm -hmm. like it seems like uh at least but now we've gone backwards today. we've today gone backwards Today, remember, today is the deadline for the submission of the candidates. And as far as my knowledge concerned, I am not aware of other candidates beyond Haki Musa and Ambassador Arikana. Okay, but Arikana, uh, Ambassador Arikana, is she on? Uh, has she been endorsed by the SADR, the Southern African Economic uh, Group? Well, from what I see in the communique that was submitted by the Dean of the SADC mm -hmm. to the African Union Commission, so I don't mm -hmm. see her name. So you don't see her? I don't see a candidate for the post of chairperson, which means so, if she is not endorsed by the region, mm -hmm. even though her own country, I mm -hmm. think, if I'm not mistaken, believe in her. Okay. But if she is not endorsed by the Sadiq region, okay. then she could she could not be. She can, she's not a candidate. What about East Africa? Has East has Eastern Africa presented a candidate to your for knowledge? The, I have. Well, okay. For the post of the chairperson, I do not see any other candidate than Faki Musa. Wow. At least up okay. to today, because today is the last day. For the submission of the candidates today being friday september 4th right exactly as the national regulator of the communications industry in ghana the national communications authority seeks to ensure an environment that is safe and fair for consumers and service providers nca grants licenses and authorizations for operation of communication systems and services develops guidelines to streamline communication activities establish and monitor quality of service indicators for operators and service providers nca is in eight regions nakra tamale takradi Kuma Ho, Kufaridua, Sunyani, and Bolgatanga. Do you have unresolved complaints with your service providers? Contact us on 0800 0307-011419 between the hours of 8 o'clock a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. from Monday to Friday or visit our website at www.nca.org.gh and follow the procedure for filing a complaint or submitting inquiry. National Communications Authority communications for development. 
We wake up every morning to different stories from politics, business, sports, and entertainment. These stories, one way or the other, affect our lifestyle and dealings with family, friends, and business associates. Your take on Diaspora Network Television gives you an opportunity to have your take on these pertinent issues via phone in and messages to our social media platforms, DNT Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If it's an important trend and story, we will definitely talk about it. Your take with me, Yao Sechi, on DNT. Would you buy anything without first knowing exactly what the product was and how it could benefit you? Definitely not. Neither should you vote for your next member of parliament without knowing who they are and how they plan to solve your problems. Watch the next MP only on Diaspora Network Television and find out the men and women who want to represent you in parliament. The next MP only on DNT. DNT did a poll, an internet polling. So here's the question. Uh, it's a hypothetical African Union Commission chair matchup. Which of these people has Africa's best interest at heart? Musa Faki, who is in, in, the incumbent, Arikana Chihombori Kwa, uh, the lady you're talking about, and then other. Here are the numbers. 93.55% of the respondents chose Dr. Arikana Chihombori Kwa. 4.84% chose Musa Faki. These are people who voted on the internet. And then 1.61% said other. Let's look at uh, the other uh, question. Who can better stand up to foreign interest in Africa? The numbers are the same. 93.55% for Dr. Arikana Chihuahua, 4.84 for Faki. Next question. Who should be the next African Union Commission chair? 91.94% uh, chose Arika, Dr. Arikana Chihuahua, the same 4.4%. When you look at these numbers, okay, and here's one. To whom? Here's a question. To whom would you trust with Africa's future? 88.71% chose Dr. Arikana Chihuahua. 8.06% chose Faki. With these numbers, why is Fa Musa Faki the only person running for African Commission Chair and everybody uh, has been silent? Why do you think is the problem? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. So I'm not surprised with the numbers that you know, you've, you've quoted. Uh, I don't have to worry about uh, the exact number, but I think I'm not surprised. Having uh, okay. uh, interacted with uh, Dr. Arikana myself uh, mm -hmm. on some of the programs that I organize, mm -hmm. uh, I have seen her delivering. You see, if you want to achieve something that you've never achieved in Africa, you know, as, a say, as the saying goes, then you have to mm -hmm. do something that you've never done it before. So um, Dr. Arikana was doing things differently. So of course okay. I can understand how some people are, you know, feel uncomfortable because, you know, she she is she's she does things differently. But the public loves it. So I think maybe that that figure that you quoted, uh, it tells me that you know, uh, the votes probably was uh, done by the public. So I can understand that. Yeah. But let me tell you what. So, mm -hmm. because of the influence of the foreign forces in the affairs of the mm -hmm. union, mm -hmm. now I think it seems like it is the foreign forces now, we've allowed the foreign forces to make a decision mm -hmm. for us. In this okay. case, the presence of France, China, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. headquarters, is strongly mm -hmm. felt by everybody. The presence okay. of French, the Chinese mm -hmm. and the headquarters of the African Union Commission is strongly mm -hmm. felt by everybody. So the question is, are we supposed to serve our own continent, mm -hmm. the people of Africa, or to do uh -huh. the opposite, exactly the opposite? 
by serving those foreign forces. So I don't have a problem to what the French or the Chinese or the Americans are doing. What's most important for me is how am mm -hmm. I responding to what is happening to me in the first place. So it seems yeah. like the current leadership at the AU is not really serving the interest of African citizens. And there's a reason for that. According to a document that the reform document that was uh, brought about, what was formulated in Kigali, one of the five areas that they said they were going to concentrate on is the independence of the African Union. Now, it seems to me that these leaders, the 55 presidents, they get together, they form, Afri they, they've transformed OAU to African Union, and they say, go out and do these things. How much money is each country uh, contributing to African Union? Because according to this document, the African Union is being funded by international donors. They say who pays the piper calls the tune. And so how realistic is it for us to expect African Union to be independent when they get their funding from uh, foreign donors? I will tell you uh, when Madam oh, Union was the chairperson of the African Union, I was at the African Union. I was working in the Bureau of the Chairperson mm -hmm. at some point. Okay. I could see how Madam Zuma was resisted to the European Union, to the Americans, because they wanted to make a decision for her. And she said no, she could not allow them. She could not allow them to influence her decision. And I'm not surprised, they hated her. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't come as a surprise. And when it comes to using finance, she had to put even her own money and from her country mm -hmm. for for, for her, her program, programs, if, 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 if she had to do that. So she didn't have to rely, to depend on the foreign donors. So of course, it was not enough, more had to be done, but she alone okay. could achieve that. So member said should have helped her, but at least as a leader of the organization, she demonstrated leadership when it comes to being Pan-African, being a leader, that represents Wait. the interest of Africa, and she did it. Okay, okay. so Johan, let me say, let me hear this. Mad Madame Zuma, who's a woman, she resisted the Europeans, right? And I remember having a, uh, an interview with Dr. Arikana Chumbori Kwao in Dallas, Texas. In that interview, she made a statement, very profound statement. She said, African men have let the continent down, okay? I'll play it for you. Now, if she, a woman, is taking that position, and Madame Zuma, a woman, is resisting the foreign interest, but when you put Faki, who is a man, there, and all of a sudden, the Europeans are walking all over us, what does it say about the African men? Is Madame, uh, Dr. Arikana Chiumbori Kwao correct when she said that, we, the African men, we don't defend our turf. We allow the Europeans to walk all over us. Is that, a, is that your assessment at the African Union? Yes, I think, first of all, for Dr. Arikana, it's not only that she is a woman, she is also competent. She, I am sure, yeah. better qualifies if the criteria is to serve the interest of Africans. If okay. the criteria is who pleases the French, the Europeans, the Chinese, that's another thing. And that's not what we're supposed to do. So the criteria for electing the leadership should not be determined by the foreign forces. But unfortunately, unfortunately, yes. as, mm -hmm. as we, as we mm -hmm. speak now, the current chair of the African mm -hmm. Union is President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa. And I would have expected okay. President Ramaphosa to 
exercise leadership to leave a legacy for his name by you mean backbone transforming you mean transforming deal with leadership but by leadership you mean backbone no, mm -hmm. no the continent in his capacity as a chairperson of the african union he is a chairperson of the african union now yeah so in his capacity as a chairperson okay. of the african union so i would have expected him to follow president kagame in demonstrating leadership to transform the organization to be people-centered and people-driven organization by electing so, the right but, leader of the commission Emma, do you by, mm -hmm. by electing do you, the do, right are you telling me the commission to deliver their priorities mm -hmm. the flagship project of the agenda 2063. So for President Ramaphosa, I would have thought okay. he would have thought to do that. And his own, Madam Zuma is from South Africa. She has left a legacy by defining Africa's agenda for Africa and also by putting this flagship project, one of which is the continental free trade area. But we have many others mm -hmm. that would have connected the African Union to the citizens and that would have allowed to strengthen African citizens in the participation of the affairs of the Union. So my uh, President Ramaphosa would have done that, could, should have done that. But unfortunately, okay. he's allowing this to happen. Okay, so let me ask you, you said that you expected President Ramaphosa of South Africa to follow the leadership of President Paul Kagame of Rwanda. So in your estimation, was Paul Gak Kagame more resistant to foreign pressure than Ramaphosa of South Africa? Well, I'll put this. President Paul Kagame tried his best by being truly Pan-Africanist to serve the interest of the continent by committing himself to the transformation of the organization. So, of course, he had to displease many of these foreign forces in the process. But most importantly, I don't think he was into, he was targeting, you know, to displease uh, French and Europeans, Americans, but I think he was rather focusing on serving his own constituency, the African citizen. And he wanted to do that by reforming the African Union Commission, even though, in my humble opinion, I still have some reservation about President Paul Kagame. I would have loved President Paul Kagame if he were to endorse Donald Kanyeruka. Okay. The All right. So now. Development Bank. Okay. So what is happening? What? The one of the most competent guy that we have in this continent who could have been transformed what President Kagame himself has launched. To reform the continent so we have the best and the brightest africans in our continent in the diaspora with the capacity to transform the continent but african leaders they talk about transforming africa but they are not interested to transform the eu commission so and it looks like, like everybody is doing everybody is doing his own thing in his country exactly and the African okay. Commission, it is the only Pan-African institution that we have with the mandate to speak on behalf of the 55 member states. And we have okay. to be able to put the best and the brightest of mind in this organization. And we have them. And these people are interested to serve the organization. But our leaders are not allowing them for whatever reason. Okay, so, so you let's Dr. talk. Arikana. You mm -hmm. mentioned Dr. Arikana one of the best and the brightest, but there are also many people, like I mentioned Dr. Kaviruka and others in mm -hmm. the continent. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand why African leaders, when it comes to electing the president and the deputy chairperson of the African Union Commission, based on whether or not they were a foreign minister, you know, whether- But who is competent, right? Yeah, it has to be 
depends on the competence. It doesn't matter whether or not they were a foreign minister. It doesn't matter whether they are anglophone or francophone. It doesn't matter whether they are, you know what I mean, you know, uh, uh, supported by the French or by the Chinese, as long as they are committed to serve their own people. So African leaders need to, to demonstrate their commitment, not the political will, but political commitment to transforming the organization. Okay. Okay, so now, when you look at Faki, his leadership, right? Take a look at Cote d'Ivoire. Alsan Utara is running for a third term against the constitution. Not a word from Faki. In Guinea, President Alpha Conde also running for a third term against the constitution. Not a word from Faki. In these two countries, the people are protesting, some of them are getting killed. Where is the leadership of African Union Commission in these instances? Well, I can mention many more. Like, we are living during a COVID time. So what are the strategy for intra-Africa trade during the COVID? Or, I mean, we can talk a lot, but it seems like, you know, we are allowing the French or other forces to pick the leader for us. Like, I can tell you, the Chinese, for example, they do not want us, Africa, to advocate for the reform of the United Nations Security Council. Remember, we have a decision that, you know, to put two African countries to be member of the permanent seats, to have a member of uh, mm -hmm. the United Nations Security Council. But the Chinese are mm -hmm. not happy with that. So the Chinese have to tell some African leaders to shut up. And they shut up. They just, well, we are not, it's been like years. So we're not working towards just securing these two seats to be, we, we Africa has the majority within the United Nations system. And yet we are not approaching this system with as, as a, a, a unified voice. Remember, we are now living in a new, world with a Trump, America first, with a Brexit, with Russia rising up in, in their region, with the Chinese coming up, coming out. Now, what is Africa's position in this new global governance structure? Are we claiming our rightful place within this new global governance structure? And that's what is expected of the leadership of the African Union Commission to look at the bigger picture. Where do we belong? What is our rightful place within this global governance structure in this new order? Where is, where is Africa's let me, let me. How let do me. we achieve that? Okay, let me give you uh, a scenario, okay? Now, um, the, in Ghana, the, the mayors of the cities were appointed by the president. They were not elected by the people. And so all a mayor needed to do is have a good relation with the president. And he's safe. He doesn't care about the people, right? In this scenario, the presidents, the 55 presidents are the ones chosen. And they are busy running their respective countries, okay? And so what would it take for the African Union Commission charter to be amended whereby the people are the ones that are going to choose the commission chair because if the people were chosen it seemed to me that according to this poll we would have a different leader at the commission chair but because the people the citizen the african citizen is not choosing the african union commission chair and the country club members are going to sit somewhere and say oh you know we like this guy so let's give him another four years we're not even going to allow anybody to run against him. What are we doing? Is it time for African citizens to choose the African Union Commission chair? Yes, I agree. I think if we had allowed President Kagame to continue, or if mm -hmm. we had to see President Ramaphosa to follow up President Kagame's leadership, okay, by by electing the right leader of the commission and by delivering the flagship project, I think we could have gone towards what you're saying. 
because if you look into the agenda 2063 and the flagship projects that would allow African citizens to participate in the affairs of the union and for the African Union Commission to be connected to the citizens, it would have allowed. So what you're talking about, we could have seen that. That is exactly why I'm saying the leadership of the African Union Commission is very important. And African leaders are not serious in doing that. So for me, I don't think we need to wait as citizens of this continent. I don't think we need to wait for African leaders to, 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 to change. I think we have to be proactive and we have to do our own part. We have to do what can we do what can the citizens well, what can the citizens do well i'll tell you what for example i don't think we should allow if it is only faki musa as a candidate i don't think we should allow during the summit for him to get a two-third vote i don't think he must get a two-third vote remember in 2006 none of the three mm -hmm. candidates none of the three candidates got two third that's why madame okay. Zuma had to, to postpone for another thing so if faki musa is the only one going as a chair so i mm -hmm. i think the citizens of africa through the civil society organization like ecosoc of the african union mm -hmm. the women business community and including the men the academia mm -hmm. the youth organization mm -hmm. we have to put mm -hmm. pressure in our respective country, in our region, in the RECs, to put pressure and to postpone that election for another six months so that we can have other candidates to apply. Okay. And and then to have a competition, a debate between the candidates and to elect the right leader to run the organization so african so let me so so let me ask you this the strategy is to um to postpone to 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 push for postponement of the election is that what you're saying the election yes, is supposed if, to be in if, february if, yes today is it as i said today is the deadline so if it is only fucking okay. Musa that we have as a candidate for the chairperson I strongly mm -hmm. recommend, I strongly recommend to African civil society organization, academias, business, mm -hmm. private sectors, the youth okay. organizations, the media, the okay. media like yourselves. Okay. So okay. actually put a pressure on our leaders at the national level, at the regional level, okay. at okay. the continental level like President Ramaphosa. He is going to be the chair okay. of the AU to in post Wait, to, to postpone the election or to postpone the deadline? One, one, is, one is to postpone, it's possible to postpone the deadline. We can, we, can, okay. we can postpone it for one month. So we can postpone it for one month and then we can have okay. other candidates to apply and we should allow other candidates based on their competence it doesn't matter which uh, whether they are francophone anglophone based on their competence to apply and for the regions to endorse them like okay. zimbabwe to my knowledge zimbabwe is happy to endorse dr arikana so we must allow okay. zimbabwe to endorse her and for the sadic for the sadic mm -hmm. to reconsider the application so that they put Dr. Arikana as a candidate of SADC and also other okay. regions. No, no, like East Africa, we must allow Dr. Kabiruka, we must allow Dr. Kabiruka to be a candidate. And other okay. in the North. All right, so if you, we have in Gozi, if you, we have, yeah. we have Amina, I mean, we have a lot of competence with the capacity and capability okay. To transform the organization so we must it's not about extending for another one month it's also allowing okay. and endorsing these potential candidates to run and regardless okay. of their, their their background
We wake up every morning to different stories from politics, business, sports, and entertainment. These stories, one way or the other, affect our lifestyle and dealings with family, friends, and business associates. Your take on Diaspora Network Television gives you an opportunity to have your take on these pertinent issues via phone in and messages to our social media platforms, DNT Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If it's an important trending story, we will definitely talk about it. Your take with me, Yao Sechi, on DNT. Would you buy anything without first knowing exactly what the product was and how it could benefit you? Definitely not. Neither should you vote for your next member of parliament without knowing who they are and how they plan to solve your problems. Watch the next MP only on Diaspora Network Television and find out the men and women who want to represent you in parliament. The next MP only on DNT. Okay, now, question. You mentioned something about two-thirds of the vote. Tell us about that. Why is that important? Well, remember, for the candidate to be elected as a chairperson, that candidate has to get a two-thirds of the vote of the assembly. Okay. So, in 2006 in Rwanda, when we had three candidates, none of them, in my humble opinion, were qualified. I actually wrote an article at that time okay. protesting of electing this candidate. So none of these candidates were able to get two thirds of the vote of the assembly. And that's why we didn't elect the chairperson. And then we had asked the Marab Zuma to postpone for another six months. So, okay. Who asked token, Who asked her? Who asked her to postpone it? The assembly, the assembly. Okay, the, okay. Uh, yeah, the assembly. Okay. So if they don't elect, if, if the candidates do not get two thirds of the vote, then the current would proceed, continue like for another six months. So now, if the only candidate that we have for this February election is Faki Musa of Chad, mm -hmm. in my humble opinion, I call upon African citizens to actually put pressure on our leaders to please postpone the election, if possible, to extend it for another one month and allow candidates to put their application, otherwise to postpone it, so that we can have qualified candidates to run. Okay. First. All right. My final question to you is this. Let's say we do all this and Faki is no longer there and a different candidate, maybe uh, Dr. Arikana or the Kenyan guy that you're talking about. And France say, okay, we didn't get our way. So the funding that we use to support African Union, we're not bringing it. The Western country said, we're holding our money. What, where does that leave African Union? Because none of these African countries has enough money to support the commission. What happens then? Well, first of all, I don't think when we created the African Union, we never expected, you know, the, uh, it was not with the intention, you know, the foreign forces to finance our program. This is our own organization and we are responsible to finance it. And the okay. man that I was talking about, Dr. Kabiruka of Rwanda, mm -hmm. he was running this initiative, the financing the union. So he okay. was able to raise a lot of money for the organization. So okay. I think if we, let's forget the, for me, I don't worry about those uh, Europeans and the Chinese and the Americans because mm -hmm. they can only come in and uh, influence if we let them. when we allow if, them. Yeah, because right. it's not about what they are doing. It is about how we are responding to what they are doing. So and if we do not allow them, if we do not divide ourselves, then, mm -hmm. you know, it would be very difficult for them to penetrate us. The only option okay. they would have is to work with us. The only okay. option they would have would be to work with us because they don't That's have right. another option. Yes. So what I'm saying is, so what I'm saying is, if we have Dr. Arikana, I know that French are uncomfortable with her, but yeah. trust me, if we elect her, they would not have any other option but but to work, to with, work with her, based okay. on a respect, based yes. on respect, mutual understanding, 
but we would work towards our common agenda and shared vision. Okay, if we were to bring Kabiruka, if we were uh -huh. to bring Kabiruka, they wouldn't have any other option. But what if, what, okay, maybe the African leaders are not comfortable with Dr. Arikana Chiomboripua because he says it like it is and they're not comfortable. Is that a reason? Well, I think for me, uh, it is, this is not personal. So what I want to look is what is the uh, responsibilities of the chairperson to Africa Union Commission? So my question is, is she capable of delivering? It's not like, you know, how these presidents feel about what she says and how she does what she does. So the question is whether it's Arikana or other leader. I am not really, you know, talking about Dr. Arikana. I happen to repeat right. her name and to talk right. more about her as we speak now, because mm -hmm. to my knowledge, she is the only candidate that I see that applied her, uh, submitted her application. So that's why okay. I'm talking. But otherwise, you know, I am also, I'm only talking about those best and brightest to mind across the continent with the capacity and capability to run the organization. So I'm speaking for all of them. But uh, for me, I know a lot of African, well, some diplomats may not like her, but the question is, she's not supposed to please these people. That's not her job. Her job is to deliver. What is she saying and what is she doing? What has she done with the task that was she, that was given to her as an ambassador of the African Union in Washington DC? Has she delivered with the assign? So this is let's look at her track record. Has she delivered? Has she uh, implemented the assignments that was given to her? And this is also part of the leadership of Madam Zuma. She came to this position, Dr. Arikana, appointed by uh, Madam Zuma. So that's also part of the leadership of Madam Zuma you know, reaching out to the best and the brightest ones. Not only that she's a woman, she's also competent. So I know the French are not happy. And trust me, I don't think we need to worry about them. Because they're not happy because we allow them to influence us. Our leaders, they're worried about whether or not they are displacing the French or the Chinese. Okay or the uh, Americans. So I think we need to bring a paradigm shift. We need to focus on serving our own continent, the people of Africa. I call upon President Ramaphosa, I keep saying this, as a chairperson in his capacity, as a chairperson of the African Union, to take this issue seriously, he cannot just say, okay, now we have Faki Musa, he's from uh, Francophonie, he's, uh, we don't want to look like that, you know, we are against the Francophonie, we don't want to look like that, you know, we are going to disappoint the French, so, or we don't want to look like, you know, we are going to disappoint the Chinese, so let's just allow him, you know, to run for the second term, and then, we, no, no, no. So I don't care about what the Chinese or that, what the French or the Americans think about how we, <laughs> deliver my, my question is how do african people the citizens of this continent react to his leadership are they happy you're talking about in the, in the very beginning yeah how many african citizens know about the african union you have and what has he delivered have, what are what ha, over the last four years what has he delivered from the flagship project that was done. Madam Zuma, I was there. I have seen Madam Zuma working with the then ECA head, Carlos Lopez, and with uh, Donald Kabirika she, uh, to, to, to come up with this agenda for Africa and with this flagship project. And Faki Musa's assignment was to implement and to deliver yeah. amongst the many flagship projects. Now we have won the continental free trade area. What happens okay. with the African passport? What happens okay. with the cybersecurity? With the silencing the gun? With the outer... Sp I mean, what has happened? And okay. on what basis are we endorsing Faki Musa to run for the second term? What has he delivered? So on what basis are we you, endorsing him? 
you are going to be on a conference call with all these leaders. Is that correct? A Zoom call. Well, on the 9th of September, which is African Union mm -hmm. Day, mm -hmm. so we are launching the Africa Fact Book. Okay. So the Africa Fact Book mm -hmm. uh, is financed by Zimbabwe. It's a very okay. important project, by the way. Okay. So it's financed by Zimbabwe. Thanks to Zimbabwe to finance it. And President Ramaphosa is launching it in his capacity as the chairperson of the African Union. Okay. And Fakimusa, as the chairperson of the African Union Commission, is also participating. So I am also invited to participate in the launching of this book. And in fact, I was requested even to, uh, to make a remark, which I, you know, proudly do. Okay, so when you make that remark, are you going to make your opinions known in that arena? Well, you see, I don't want to look like that. You know, I am abusing this uh, this uh, uh, space. Uh, that, okay. that that platform was mainly to launch the Africa Fact book, and okay. uh, the uh, my remark was requested a week ago and i have already delivered uh, the, the the video okay and okay. unfortunately my remark is already delivered but okay. if we are going to be debating about the continents during the launching of that book and i can assure you mm -hmm. i would be the first person to ask president ramaphosa and to plead <laughs> you know about <laughs> I know about the election of so, the new commission. By the time September 9th, by the time of this uh, event, we would have known that Faki is the only candidate. Although you've submitted your remarks, you are still going to physically actually deliver it on the Zoom conference call. Now, uh, now, if at that time you know that Faki is the only candidate, would you add um, sort of an amendment to your your prepared remarks and and ask uh, His Excellency Ramaphosa to postpone the uh, uh, or the deadline? So listen, I am not going. I am not going to be the same as the leaders, you know, uh, and then you okay. know, do 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 nothing. So. If I, I want to be exemplary, so I do not want to ask African civil society in academia use to do and me when I have the opportunity to do nothing. So I can assure you that when, if I get the opportunity to interact with President Ramaphosa, okay. I would be the first person to directly speak to him about the election of this commission and how serious it is. And the leadership that we expect in him okay. towards okay. truly reforming the organization by electing the right leader. And On that I note, this, I will do that. You do that. On that note, we're going to hold you to that promise, Johannes. Well, you know what? You are my my new best friend. You're Pan Africanist, um, Johan Mesgebe from Ethiopia. Well. You're not from Ethiopia, you're from Africa, and so am I. So we're African brothers, right? Well, yes, yes, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm an African citizen born in Ethiopia. There you go, there you go. When the African passport gets here, I get it first, you get it second, or the other way around, right? Listen, we want every uh -huh. immigration uh -huh. office in African countries uh -huh. to give out African passport to their citizens. So we this, okay. must have, this should have done during Pakistan. So we have not he has not done it. So I think okay. by giving African passport to African citizens, let's start connecting the citizens with the union and the union to the citizen. And Man, we must avoid been... visa. We must, yes. we must promote the free movement of African people. There is no visa yeah. for Africans. The African Union passport is enough for African citizens to move across the continent without a visa. 
and I have okay. said, if, including in my own country, I come from Ethiopia, the most difficult country when it comes to promoting the free movement of African citizens. But I have been challenging my own government for years, advocating for the free movement of African citizens within even Ethiopia. So I think we must okay. promote the free movement of African citizens across the whole continent. And I think in doing so, this could be a great opportunity for the organization okay. to connect it to the citizens. Okay. Okay. Well, very good. My friend, Johannes Mess Gebe, it has been a fascinating interview. I thank you for joining us at Diaspora Weekly. This has been Diaspora Weekly on Diaspora Network Television. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah. And I'll thank you for uh, being our guest tonight. We'll talk again. Thank you for having me.